Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The prices on the FIFA 23 market continue to drop as we are experiencing basically the first market crash of FIFA 23, and it's painful. I'm right there with you. I'm losing coins, players and teams, players that we've invested in. Basically, it seems like everything is going down right now on this market. It's very tough to make coins, and a lot of people are just losing loads at the moment with the way the market is headed. I want to explain in today's video why why in the world the market is dropping so much, what has caused this over the past couple of days, prices dropping so far, and are we done? Is it going to keep dropping into today on Thursday, which I think there's a bit of potential for some fluctuation today, some prices going up, maybe some going down with supply, but also how I think tomorrow and Friday with the Rule Breakers promo upcoming is going to really be interesting for this market, depending on how expensive the Rule Breakers cards are. And of course, a lot of weekend league demand for team buying, team building, and all of that. We're going to talk about a lot in today's video, so strap in, buckle in, and if you're enjoying the videos on the channel, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's talk about the market because I'm trying to make coins, but honestly, what I'm doing most recently is losing more coins than making more coins. Only like half the flips here on the transfer list have been pretty profitable, and I feel like you guys know exactly that feeling. The market just feels really dead and it just feels like it keeps dropping lower and lower and lower and as i look at prices right now heading into a thursday i'm seeing prices that were like they're crazy to me look at benzema 91 rated benzema is 71 000 coins yesterday he started the day at 91k he dropped down to about 78 and then of course as we've gotten to these late night hours he's down even further with how much these player prices has dropped, it is absolutely a market crash. I mean, again, you just look at how steep his price drop off is. It's it's crazy. Kevin De Bruyne's another one who is like 160k, 168k to start the day on Wednesday is now down under 140,000 coins. It, this is happening everywhere. It's your meta gold cards that are dropping. Of course, it's your out of packs, um, you know, informs and stuff that are dropping too. You've got a team of the week, Marquinhos at 193. Modric, who was above um, 100, was now is now 85. Akanji is down. And especially, you're looking at the road to the knockout cards that are absolutely getting obliterated in price. This is for me where I've lost the most coins. Phil Foden, Valverde, Aubameyang, either trading with these guys or, I mean, some people tried, you know, investing in these players, hoping for a rise after their team won. But with these roads to the knockouts, they're just getting supplied so much through the good packs we have had recently, like UEFA marquee matchups. And I think they've really been invested in so much too, that it's making their prices absolutely die off. And of course, the real life aspect with these road to the knockouts is being put into play too, right? You've got Rafinha, who's all over the place yesterday, but since Barca tied with Inter is now down to 190,000 coins. He was actually about 170 and started to slide back up a bit. Lamar was over 100. He went down to like 70K where he is now. Aubameyang continues to drop. Muller was 50K. He's now 38,000 coins. Messi's only a million, right? So many price drop-offs on these cards. Again, what I really think is causing all of this is what I've mentioned. Number one, the supply. Those The UEFA marquee matchups packs um, is a big factor, in, especially for the road to the knockout prices dropping off. Uh, so many people were packing cards and so many were good things, like really good cards from the UEFA marquee matchups SBC because the pack weight was really good. This is what really kicked off the start of the market crash this week on Tuesday was the really good packs that you got from here and how cheap the SBC was. Now, a lot of people on Tuesday, myself included, invested in some road to the knockouts for the quick flip, right? Paqueta was like 170,000 coins or something like that. I mean, now he's like 120K. This guy, uh, he was he was under 120K a little bit ago. So maybe slightly rising up into the morning already on today on Thursday. But I think it's number one, the supply, right? These cards keep getting packed. They keep getting packed. And of course, people eventually upgrade from some of these gold cards, even some of the most meta gold cards that people love to use, like an Usman Dembele, right? 83 rated card. He's dropped from like 90K to 65,000 coins in the past two or three days. A price like this doesn't just drop um, because of, you know, people moving on and choosing a different card, which there have been a lot of great content, Brigade SBCs um, released recently. And I think that's part of why the market is going down, but it's the supply too. So the supply on these cards is starting to come in and, and overtake the demand for some of them. And like I said, with the content, 
The content's been really, really good recently as well. Think about all the SBCs you maybe have completed, whether it's the 80 plus upgrade packs that drains coins off the market, whether it's the Danjuma, the Banacher SBC, um, you know, the Raheem Sterling ones to watch, right? There's been so many good value player SBCs that people have been working towards and grinding to get done and to add to their teams. There's just been a lot more content that people can put in their teams that is untradeable. And because of that, they maybe go and sell a card from their team when they go and get one of these SBCs done. Yesterday, of course, we had the Savio SBC. This could technically be impacting um, Usman Dembele's price a little bit, even though this card does not look that fantastic. And it, it's pretty cheap, but I mean, he needs upgrades if he's going to be pretty good. So that's kind of the point there is we've had a lot of great untradeable content. We have a lot of supply from packs coming in. And when people start to see prices drop as much as they have been dropping and people will start to lose coins like myself. And I know a ton of people have been losing coins on this Phil Foden card, which I still believe is very undervalued with the, the value. This card is going to be in the future, I think, with the potential upgrades that he can get. I do believe that a lot of these live cards are a bit undervalued, but I don't want to buy them yet because the market still sees them as cards that are getting packed and supplied and people just panic sold so many of these cards. And that's what's really pushing the market down another level is the panic selling. People see prices drop, they go and they sell and they sell because they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to be caught up in, in seeing the prices go down. And oh my goodness, the prices could go down even further. And that's where you see, oh my gosh, Neymar's 420k. That's literally down like 100,000 coins from where he was on Tuesday. He was like 514K. Wow, that's a crazy drop on Neymar in a very short time span. All right, you know, I got to be honest, right? There's a lot of panic selling here. There's a lot of supply, but this is not like in a crazy market crash scenario where it's not like we had a base icon upgrade pack or a hero pack that was added to SBCs that's draining tons and tons and tons of coins. Right now, the market's still in a decently healthy state. It's not like we have Black Friday on the horizon or anything like that either. I think a lot of these really high tier meta cards do have potential to bounce back this weekend a little bit. Again, I'm not saying that Neymar right now at 428K is going to be back to 500,000 coins on Friday night when you have a lot of buyback. I'm just saying that like some of these cards that have dropped off, you know, incredible, incredible amounts like Neymar down five from 500K to the low 400s, I could very well see this card being like 460, 450, 460 again on Friday night. That sort of thing is what I can see with the high tier meta part of this market. The lower tier cards, I'd be a lot more careful with, um, but especially some of your out of pack special cards too. I think what we're gonna see over the next couple of days, especially on today on Thursday is, you're, I think you're gonna see a little bit of a slight rise on the market on your meta cards because some of them have just dropped too much as people have gotten sucked into just the whole panic of a panic sell and of the market dropping off and them not wanting to get stuck with cards and them losing coins. And yes, when people lose coins, the market does get devalued and it sucks, right? I'm not trying to take away and detract from the fact of that is that it sucks to lose coins, but you know, it's kind of part of the game cycle and that's how EA structures this game, right? EA structure this game for you and me to lose coins over the course of the year because new cards come out, they start expensive, and as more and more new cards come out, those drop off because people move on to the new, the next best great thing that EA releases in the game. Um, and yes, we have a new promo coming with Rule Breakers this weekend as well, which could be a, another small aspect of why the market is dropping. But I really do believe that it's a combination of the pack supply, the panic selling, and just the great untradeable content that we have had recently is that is the reasons why this market is continuing to get pushed lower and it's making it incredibly hard to make coins from the normal ways that we have been making coins in the past couple of days uh, just because everything just seems to go lower on the market. Now, let's talk today on Thursday, a little bit of a market outlook for today. What's gonna happen, right? I do believe, like we talked about with that Neymar, some of your high tier meta cards, these guys, I mean, Thursdays aren't really big days with Rivals Rewards that like push the market up. I mean, Neymar right now is 430K, a pretty rare card like this. How many pages to 460,000 coins? We don't have that many cards, like four and a half pages all the way back up to 460. Of course, he might get packed a little bit at rewards today, but I think that some of your higher tier meta cards, higher rated that are gonna get packed a lot less and people are gonna see how cheap these guys are and they're gonna be like, man, I can go buy Benzema for 70K for my team. 
Uh, heck yeah, I'm going to go try Benzema today, play my weekend league qualifiers or, you know, play rivals games, whatever it is. There's still a lot of gameplay demand. People are playing this game to get rewards. I think you could see a couple of these meta cards go up, but I also think that that might be a short lived rise because, um, as people maybe go out and buy a few cards for their team today, after people most often do when there's a reward set released in the game, I also think you're going to have some supply today on Wednesday. So Kind of a normal Thursday. I do think you might see a bigger rise today than you have in the past couple of weeks on Thursdays just because um, there's going to be so much sell-off and people are going to see these prices and they're going to be like, man, these prices are dirt cheap. I'm going to get involved and potentially have an opportunity to make some coins um, and buy a, buy some cards for my team that are just maybe a little bit uh, you know, too cheap right now from all the panic selling and stuff that's been going on. So that's what I would have to say. And that's how I would feel about the market for today on Thursdays. I think you might see that slight rise after rewards. Also, like, you know, watch these team elite cards. I'm looking at Tamori. I'm, I'm looking at Cancelo. I just flipped the Cancelo from like 210 to 227, 230, right? That's the kind of profits we're having to make. It's not big. It's not pretty. Just quick flips on rare cards. That's the best advice I can give you is watch the out of packs cards for today as well, because those will give you some of the best profits. And they're some of the most safest cards when a lot of stuff that is in packs is getting supplied and panic sold at the same time. The out of pack stuff usually drops a little bit less. And when you have those drops, you have a bigger potential for the rarity of that card to kick in and have a little bit of a flipping opportunity and making some coins off of that as well. But definitely watch your brand new team elite cards as they get packed today from Rivals Rewards. 253 for that Tamori. He's getting pretty rare. And, you know, like right now, trading with these cards that are rare, you see how many Tamoris we have here to like 270? Like I am really tempted to flip that Tamori. You know what? I'm going to do it, man. Let's go. 253. It's late night. I think that in the next two hours, I can get like 280 for that. Seriously. He already went from 250 to two, uh, to 300K uh, one time. And yeah, we're going to get there easy. So I'm going to give that quick flip a try because that's where I see potential to make flips right now in this market is with those rare cards. So watch those informs today. There's a lot of really popular informs from the team of the week that will get supplied today and probably have some bounce backs. Watch the Correa card. There's so much hype for him. Martinelli, Pedri, Cancelo, Tamori, Frimpong, and Correa. Those are the guys I'd watch the most. I'm not saying this team of the week is insane. I'm just saying this team of the week has affordable meta cards people kind of want to put in their team. So that's kind of the outlook for today. Maybe a slight rise after rewards. And then of course, a little bit of panic selling before 6 p.m. Marquee matchups content. But then after 6 p.m. today, I feel like your team of the week cards are going to drop for sure. Your road to the knockout cards are probably going to drop as well. Because again, marquee matchup supply is something that you really you really don't want to mess with and you you don't want to try to test because a lot of times marquee matchups as we've seen in the past couple weeks does drop the market pretty considerably so i'd watch out with these road to knockout cards again we're going to be getting more leaks today about rule breakers so just be of course watching for those that could impact the market a little bit if we have some more insane cards that are leaked but what i think you're really going to see again is a really low point on the market thursday night into friday morning for a lot of meta cards. Remember the last two weeks once again is we saw low prices Thursday night and Friday and then after content on Friday, cards just explode. As people go back out to the market, they buy cards to their teams and you just see a really, really big market explosion. You know, I think we're set up for something like that again this week um, for a lot of cards on this game. Um, oh my goodness, Rafael Liao is 81,000 coins. No freaking way. Like look at this guy. He's now out of packs. He was 100K. And now he's 81K. Pretty big price drop off there for an out of packs inform card that's very popular. Sadio Mane is 130K. Like part of just with this market crash is just reveling at the crazy prices that have dropped off so much uh, in the past day or two. So my best advice to you would be just be careful, right? Be careful flipping cards right now. And I need to heed some of this advice myself. I bought a Forlan yesterday at 300,000 coins because I thought it was a great deal. And granted, he was 360. He went down to 300, went back up to 320. I didn't sell. I was trying to get 330. I was being too greedy, right? And he kept going back down. There's been continuous panic selling here. Um, you know, why could the market not go up a lot today? I want to ask and, and answer that question really quick is, you know, I just don't think there's enough demand today to really pick the market up. Up enough to make things really explode today on Thursday. I think it'd be a slight rise. And then after that, I do think uh, you would see some more panic selling and some more price drops. But then again, once we get towards Friday, it's going to be a very interesting Friday on the market with everything going on. 
with the Rule Breakers promo. And that's actually what I want to talk about next. Really quick um, is the Rule Breakers promo because we have the loading screen and maybe some of this panic like we talked about is due to the fact that the Rule Breakers promo looks pretty solid. And we've, you know, Rule Breakers in general is a very fun promo. And that's why I like to wait until Friday to tell you guys to buy your teams and to be looking into this stuff and buying cards for your teams. Because if the new promo that comes out is stupid, insane, and EA does something super surprising, like last year we had the Nkunku player pick SBC for Rule Breakers. You know, there could be some more potential panic even after a content drop. And that would, of course, um, you know, it's good to wait and good to kind of be reactionary in that sense to what happens on Friday promo content drops. So let's talk about today on Thursday content wise, what we could see and all that we know about rule breakers. So rule breakers, of course, is game changing attribute upgrades that transform their style of play, right? You guys remember back in FIFA 22, we had the Holland that they decreased his shooting a little bit and they boosted his passing, made him one of the best midfielders in the game. They gave Casemiro um, an extra pace boost. Rudiger, I think they base, they, I think they upgraded his pace and then downgraded his dribbling, or they upgraded his physical and downgraded his dribbling. Uh, one of the two, Suarez with a bunch of uh, a pace boost there. The Davies card who went down on the pace, but they boosted his shooting. Um, Kulusevsky with his, a really nice pace boost on his card. Co Tegatito Corona was probably the most popular rule breaker card last year out of Team 1. Absolutely mental card. So we do have some leaks about cards that are dropping this weekend. PK, which of course you would hope to get a pace boost. I don't know if these stats are actually legit and confirmed or if they're predictions, but one of the most interesting things that we found with this Zaha card, with this leak right here is Zaha and his base gold card is able to be an explosive accelerate type with the right chem style. Think like if you put a finisher on him or an artist, he goes to explosive. This card right here with these stats, if they downgrade the dribbling and upgrade the physical, this Zaha card could potentially be lengthy. Imagine a card that was once ex uh, explosive in game, now because of this Rule Breakers promo with the strength boost and maybe a downgrade on the dribbling, you know, becoming lengthy. That's pretty crazy. And that's where I think that this new Accelerate and all this new stuff in the game could be very interesting for brand new promo cards. And EA know what they're doing with this stuff. They know they can create hype by doing a promo like this and making cards that used to be lengthy, maybe explosive or vice versa, making a card that was explosive, now lengthy. And I think that's what the Zaha card is exactly going to be, especially after seeing this leak. So PK, Fakir, Zaha, and Cristiano Ronaldo are the big names that we have right now. Those are all the rule breaker names that we have. Of course, this is the actual confirmed card design. I think it's pretty. I think I like it. Uh, it's just, it's actually a lot different from other card designs we've had. And I'm a fan of that. So GG's EA Sports uh, for this card design and, and um, the graphics work that was done there. So yeah, rule breakers is always a nice promo. It really is. And you know, Last year, we had some really good SBCs as a, as a part of this as well. The Klosterman card was really nice. It was a two-week promo. There's some rumors that this year it's going to be two weeks as well. So we're just going to have to see what leaks we get today on Thursday. I would imagine that a loading screen with updated players on it would absolutely be a part of the content today on Thursday. So watch out for that. Also today on Thursday, we mentioned the marquee matchups. We could have some more squad foundations and objectives, which personally... I think this is really nice. And this actually could aid in why the market's continuing to drop right now is these are solid players. Windall's card in here is really solid. Geertruda is really solid. You know, these guys aren't going to, you know, be the most meta cards in the world. But especially if you don't want to, you know, lose coins in your team, you can right now go make a really solid air busy squad by playing 10 matches, 20 matches or whatever, getting all of these cards completed and putting these guys into your team, at least a pretty solid hybrid with maybe some untradeables that you have. These guys are all going to link up very nicely to get you good chemistry because they're like all Dutch and all in the air divisie, um, especially the guys that are in the squad foundations. Then you can add Gakpo. You had the SBC for the Brazilian right wing, um, Savio yesterday. So yeah, they're not going to be the most meta, but there's still some pretty cool cards that you can get for basically free if you will. So that's a big W of what's going on right now um, with the content, but that also could aid in the market crash a little bit. Last thing I want to talk about is SPC fodder. And I, I don't like that. I always save SPC fodder conversations for the end of the video, but especially with like the SBC that we had last year at the beginning of rule breakers, that player pick and Kunku fodder 
is down and I like it. I like fodder a lot and you know me, we've seen these prices move a lot on the higher tier end of fodder the most. Ruben Diaz on Tuesday was 23K, dropped down to 21. Yesterday, even again from 22 down to 19K. Today with rivals rewards and marquee matchups is going to present a great opportunity to snag fodder. I like 84s, I like 87s, 88s. Those are the cards that I like the most because as you've noticed, in these SBCs that EA release, a lot of times they're either doing an 86 plus requirement or an 88 plus requirement. And you would imagine that the player SBC that would drop tomorrow on Friday would be a little bit more expensive, you know, probably somewhere around like this 75 to 150K range ish, right? I think that the Kudusevsky that we had last week was seen as an underwhelming value SBC, but it had some of those higher tier squad requirements inside of it. I think that the 88s especially if you take more of a meta approach to it. This Bernardo Silva is an absolutely very usable card still. This guy was 43K a week ago, and now he's 22,000 coins. This is the type of fodder card that you could absolutely sink some coins into. Get some on bid today on Thursday. I think it's a great shout. Do a little bit of a club stock. It's, it's the time of the year to start thinking about SBC fodder very, very seriously because you guys know we've had a hero pack and an icon pack added to the code. And last year during rule breakers was the first time that we had the hero upgrade SBC. Yes, it is true. It is factual. That was the first time we had the hero upgrade and we saw prices move a lot on the market. Fodder went crazy, crazy high. And of course, as you would expect, a lot of prices of meta cards went down. So that's just something I put out there is start looking at fodder and take it seriously as Tamori continues to rise. Where did I get mine at? 253? Oh yeah, chilling. We'll get we'll get 280 before we go to sleep and be happy with that. So I know we're losing coins right now. I know a lot of you guys have lost coins, but I'm here to tell you that it's gonna bounce back, right? There's going to be brighter days ahead. That's how it always is with these market crashes. It sucks in the moment and it's like, man, Nate, I'm losing so many coins and it sucks and EA sucks and yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, it's only temporary. These cards will rise back up. We will have plenty more opportunities to make coins and to recoup these losses that we have had um, as soon as tomorrow and even today. So keep your spirits up. Keep those positive thoughts. And it's still going to be a good day on FIFA today on a Thursday. I'm really curious to see if they tease some more players on loading screen and what leaks we have because we're definitely going to get some more rule breakers leaks today on Thursday. Watch out for these live cards like Odegaard and Juan Bisaka. Because like we've seen, last thing I'll mention here, with the road to the knockouts, even if a player and their team wins, right? Like Zambo and Guisa, they, Napoli won yesterday, right? They killed it. GG's to them. His card still went down post-game. Muller, Bayern Munich won. His card still went down post-game because so many people had invested before the game and so many people try to buy the card and trade during the game. They expect the price to go up after the game, but that literally never happens with these cards. So even if Arsenal win today, if Odegaard were to rise into the pregame hype, I would sell the card or if you know Arsenal score a goal and he goes up, sell the card. Don't hold until after the game. Same thing with Juan Bissaka as well. I'd be very, very careful not to hold on these cards for too long just because they dropped. Same thing with Paqueta as well. I mean, Paqueta, Odegaard, and Wambi Saka are kind of the only cards today that have basically more value than discard on the market, if we're being honest, uh, with a lot of these other guys being like less than 15K, except for Jared Moreno. So just watch those guys today. Just like the same thing with Bremer and Rafinha and Thomas Lamar. Um, these guys, you know, not all their teams won, but for the guys that had teams that won, their prices still dropped off. So just be very careful with that. Road to the Knockouts are some of the most fun cards in this game, but they're also the most risky cards and they lose people. I tweeted this yesterday. I think that Road to the Knockouts caused the biggest loss of coins um, out of any card type or Road to the Finals caused the biggest loss of coins throughout the entire year of FIFA more than any other card type in this game. So as the servers are being slow, I'm gonna take that as my sign to log off and be done with the video. But if you enjoyed today's video, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. Tell me how your market experiences have been. And I know that we're losing some coins, but we're gonna make it back, just as I said. And if you wanna do that, hit the subscribe button on the channel as well. I'll see you guys today in a Twitch stream. It's been Nate the Put Account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.